to righteousness will shine, shine, shine with heaven's sweet caress. Those that turn, 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 many to righteousness. How's that volume for you? Is it super quiet? Great. It's good. good. I had to check to make sure that was the Levens because they're dear friends and I recognize their voices. There's been a request for you to share the link. I know the voices there. <laughs> All right, that one in the middle, just saying. <laughs> Very cool. Shall I advance to the next question? <laughs> There's another Mentimeter coming in a sec, friends. We're just yeah. a couple questions in order to help us frame the session. So thank you for your patience.
Jay, can you slide the screen down so we can see anything new before you put the last one in? Thank you. Um, start us off so we can keep going. Some of these answers are so great and I, and I don't want to miss a minute of what our presenters have brought to the table. Okay, so no first I want to welcome everybody to our, um, this is our third summer Onward Hebrew webinar. This one particularly is on um, tefillah and prayer goals as it relates to Onward Hebrew, which means thinking about how Hebrew fits in. I'm delighted that we have a team today that is going to be facilitating us through this conversation and I'll turn things over to Rachel. Hi everyone, thank you for taking the time uh, during the middle of your day, during your summer. I hope for you, it's, your summers are a little more quiet um, and that this summer you're actually getting to wear your educator hat and not your public health officer hat like we've had to for the last two years. Um, my name is Rachel Mursky woda I'm a reformed Jewish educator, a senior educator at Temple Beth El in Providence, Rhode Island. And I'm joined today with uh, the following educators with experience and expertise. I have Rabbi Kevin Kleinman and Karen Cantor Farron Rudnick from Mainline Reform Temple in Wynwood, Pennsylvania. And Jay Rappaport, also a reformed Jewish educator certified from Temple Shalom in Chicago, Illinois. Today, um, it's not about advocating one approach over another. Um, ultimately, what is important is that you and your team identify what your why is when it comes to tefillah and prayer goals. Um, and, and we want to present a few different ideas and systems we have each put in place that are reflective of our respective communities. In this session, we'll give you a brief opportunity in a second to meet one another in small groups. You'll hear from each of us at what works regarding our tefillah and prayer goals in our shops. And then you'll have a chance to pick one of three conversations to do a deeper dive into a specific area of our achievements. And at the very end, we'll regroup and share um, specifically what we plan to start in our shops, what we, what we want to think about, what we want to stop, and then what we want to think about as we move forward. So um, at this time, I'm going to ask Nahama to put us into mini breakouts just so we can say hello to one another a little bit quicker than if we were to go all the way around the circle. Um, so if you could do that, Nahama, that would be great. I will do that, but the question is, what are people doing when they're in their groups? Oh, I find my apologies, my apologies. So I'm going to ask you to share your name, uh, your where you're located, and um, you know what's one thing you're looking to improve uh, or that you love about your school tefila. So we'll put those in the chat right now for you as you're being put into groups. Hang on one second, my fault. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to invite Rabbi Kevin Kleinman and Cantor Farron Rudnick to tell us a little bit about what's working at Mainline Reform Temple. So I'm handing it over to you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Rabbi Kevin Kleinman, and I'm with Cantor Farron Rudnick. We're in the same building, but in different locations. Um, so we're going to split our time talking about tefillah and prayer goals and integration between a religious school Hebrew curriculum, sixth grade Hebrew program, bar and bat mitzvah training. Um, but as I was kind of thinking about this earlier, um, you know, for me and I think for us, you know, one of the things is that really our tefillah is a thread that weaves together our early childhood program, our religious school program our family and holiday Shabbat services and programs together. Um, that it really is a thread that we, in addition to Cantor Rennick and myself, there's another rabbi in our team, um, and we have a family educator who's also a musician, um, you know, and the four of us are that consistent presence 
And even though melodies will shift and change between the age groups, there is a core feeling, um, you know, to our experience of, of bringing joy and singing and dancing to our tefillah experience, beginning when our students are two years old. And even when they're on the bima for confirmation uh, at 10th grade, our madrichim, our 8th through 12th graders are part of our religious school tefillah. Uh, we have um, students who become song leaders with us. Um, so just thinking about how our students really gain confidence and comfort being in the sanctuary because they are there every week. They're singing, they're leading the prayers at the family Shabbat services, they're playing games, they're learning, they're making that space really feel like um, it's theirs. Um, you know, so one, one of our, you know, one thing that I think is an outcome of, of the consistency in our team being engaged in our early childhood and our religious school programming is that we get to create the space for our students to feel comfort and knowledgeable and participate um, and have fun while they're doing tefillah uh, with us. Um, and we do have systems in place that connect our prayer goals in religious school with building community, um, as well as developing content and participation in tefillah for religious school and then religious school student participation in family Shabbat services. Um, and that is part of our work with Onward Hebrew, um, you know, and that has been, uh, you know, a goal of ours, um, you know, for the seven years that I've been in this position. Um, I'll break it down just a little bit cognizant of time to give you a little bit of the detail of our structure. Um, we do weekly tefillah for our religious school on Sunday mornings, and we divide it into this last year it was actually three age groups, kindergarten through second grade third and fourth grade, and fifth and sixth grade. This coming year, we're gonna go back to doing two separate tefillot uh, for the ease of all of our time um, and being able to be a little bit more people back into the sanctuary. Um, but what we do in our weekly tefillah is we have prayer goals you know, for our younger students and prayer goals for our older students. So for our K through second grade, um, who are not yet reading uh, Hebrew, they are hearing and they are speaking as part of the, Hebrew, the onward Hebrew philosophy. Um, we do use a visual tefillah so that they can see the words in English and in Hebrew, um, getting used to seeing the Hebrew. Um, and we're teaching the melodies uh, that we're then also using in our family Shabbat services. So when our kindergarten, first and second graders are leading and participating in family Shabbat, uh, the melodies we're using for the Shema, the Barchu, Hine Matov, Micha Mocha, those are the melodies that they are then comfortable and confident in standing on the bima and singing um, on Shabbat services. For our third through sixth grade, our you know prayer goals that we have for tefillah um, are really about the goals that are embedded in the Hebrew curriculum that we're then highlighting and focusing on in the tefillah time. So kind of the core of the Baruchu through the Avot, um, kind of for our fourth and fifth graders, and then also introducing the Torah service in our weekly tefillah, um, because the, learning the prayers for the Torah service are our curricular goals in our sixth grade Hebrew program. Um, you know, and really for us, we are reinforcing the prayer goals in the curriculum all the way through kindergarten through sixth grade when we are meeting with uh, our students and, and singing and dancing and praying on Sunday mornings for our tefillah. Um, and then we have additional prayer goals that we're reinforcing in tefillah that are the at-home prayers, Shabbat blessings, um, Hanukkah blessings, Manish Tana. Um, so we're making sure that we're using our tefillah time on Sunday mornings to also just reinforce and teach and help our students feel comfortable and confident saying those words out loud um, as they will hopefully do them in their own homes. Um, but really, we try to make tefillah fun and have it be a way that students connect with each other and connect with us. Um, our clergy team is dancing in the aisles with our students, you know, again, when they're two or when they're 12, um, but just creating that space of this is how we pray together as a community and migrating it with different goals and different prayers that we're teaching and reinforcing uh, the older they get and as they wake their, make their way through our Hebrew curriculum. So I'll just add a small little bit, and I thank you, Rabbi Kleiman. Um, I just want to add one little point about the visual tefillah that 
it's that in addition to everything Rabbi Kleiman said, the visual piece also gives the students um, a thematic um, context so that if it's Michamocha, they're looking actually at the, a slide of the of you know of water parting or something like that, um, especially for our younger children who, again, might not be able to read Hebrew, let alone English, um, but they can understand that when we sing Love Adonai, as opposed to doing all the words of Ve'ahavta, that when we're at that moment, Shema and Ve'ahavta, what it's what that thematic context is. Um, and I wish I had thought of it, Rabbi, beforehand. I have this great video of our kids last year, at the end of the year, this group of sixth graders who were using their phones like lighters, like they were at a concert, right? Like singing <sighs> along and swaying with, I can't remember, I have the video. I can't remember the, what we were, um, which prayer, what song. I. I don't remember, but that our kids really do enjoy their time um, when they're with us. And as Rabbi Kleiman said, it's part of that growth and that continuum that starts when they're in our early childhood program, and we're fortunate to have that. Um, the big part, obviously, we always tell our students it's not about, as you know, it's not about reaching your B'nai Mitzvah date. I always tell our, our families it's actually about what happens the day after, that when our, our children wake up, they feel really proud of themselves, and they feel um, that it wasn't... Um, the, that, the, that the journey that they were on was not somehow anxiety-producing or some sort of um, an additional... Um, imposition on them, I guess, so that they feel connected, they have positive association, and that they don't feel like they walked into their first lesson with a tutor um, from a totally blank slate. Um, we really have, have done our best to um, tie some of it up neatly with a bow. Um, we started something called Prayer Lab, where our students were getting prayer reinforcement, not because we expect every student to be able to read every word that's in the Siddur, but because the Shema's, the Shema's, the Shema, wherever you go, and that if that's all that you, um, the type of learner you are, um, that, that you should be comfortable wherever you go in the world to say the Shema. Um, and Prayer Lab reinforced that so that when they got to um, to their to their tutoring there again there was a there was a thread there and there was no break and we have to go on to Jay so that was an abrupt way for me to end but we'll go on to Jay <laughs> hi thanks Cantor and uh, great to hear about what you all are doing and um, uh, we um, have a lot of similar things so I'll, I'll take this in a little bit of a different direction um, a few years ago in um, in some onward Hebrew learning here in Chicago, um, we had a light bulb moment, or I had a light bulb moment about using Camp Hebrew at Tefillah, um, because uh, I serve on the faculty of our URJ Camp Asrui, and we are encouraged to um, do as much as possible in Hebrew during Tefillah at camp. Um, so things like Boker Tov, Yashar Koach, Tada Rabah, Nala Kum, Nala Shevet, um, uh, we have a Milat Hayom when we talk about our Jewish life vocabulary. Um, we make uh, Hebrew sandwiches like we do at Asrui, where we say the Hebrew word, the English word, the Hebrew word, and then we clap to connect it. Um, and uh, we talk about Kipot and Sidurim and Madrachim. Um, and we have a learning theme each year that we talk about in Hebrew. So just trying to, uh, to make uh, our sanctuary a place where students hear Hebrew, some of which they'll know and hear every time, and some of which will be new and uh, you know holiday based, um, or Milat Hayom will just be a, you know a focus of that week. And we try to have a lot of fun with that with Milat Hayom. We ask students to say if they know it because they hear about it in their classrooms. Um, we have them make the sound of the Hebrew letter of the week uh, communally to reinforce what's happening in classrooms, um, and. Um, and just try to have a lot of fun with it. And speaking of fun, I thought we would do a little activity um, to show you one of the ways that we bring Hebrew into the sanctuary. This is based on uh, my colleague Eliana Light's prayer aerobics, um, but, but for our purposes, we do them be'ivrit in Hebrew. So um, when we explain to the students the choreography of the service, we can do that in Hebrew and then reinforce it by using those words throughout the service. So I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate and then we can do it together. Um, uh, before uh, Baruchu, we nalakum, and we have a connection between Baruch and Berach, our knee. 
then we now a Shevet. Um, and then uh, um, we um, we cover our eyes for uh, Shema and we say Shh, mm, ah. Uh, I now a Shevet it a little early, sorry. Um, and then um, uh, when we get to Amida, we nalakum. We have echad shtaim shalosh, three steps back to get ready to move three steps forward. Echad shtaim shalosh, um, and then we have a little more of this baruch berach connection between the baruch and the knees. We do this. Uh, we do baruch berach echad, and we do baruch berach shtaim. And then after um, after that, we have. Uh, our kadosh, kadosh, kadosh moment uh, up on our toes. And then eventually after that silent prayer where we have Sheket, <sighs> Nala Shevet. And then um, when we get to Elenu, we have another um, Nala Kum and we have a Nala Shevet at the end. And then we have Lahit Rot to say goodbye. So we're now gonna do these aerobics without the explanation with just uh, Hebrew. And you can try it with me if you like. Nala Kum. Baruch Berech. Shh. Mm. Ah. Nalashevet. Nalakum. Echad Shtaim Shalosh. Echad Shtaim Shalosh. Baruch Berech Echad. Baruch Berech Shtaim. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Sheket. Nala Shevet. Nala Kum. Baruch Berech. Nala Shevet. Lahit wrote. <laughs> you all did great. Yashar Koach. I love that, Jay. Thank you. Um, we do something very similar. Uh, we, I'm actually very excited about the idea of incorporating prayer aerobics. So thank you for teaching us that, Jay. Um, but we do something very similar in terms of uh, creating uh, a joyful, communal, and accessible community by dance parties and singing together every sh Sunday morning. Um, and our goal at Temple Beth El is that our students become Shabbat literate. So our tefillah is broken into two different ones on Sunday mornings. One is for our lower school, which is grades pre-K to grade four. Um, and that includes a theme of the week. Every week we choose either a different prayer and or Jewish value, or if there's a Jewish holiday coming up. And I'm very excited this year we actually get to teach the Jewish holidays right before the Jewish holidays. We haven't had that in a while. Um, and so for example, if the theme of the week is the Shema, tefillah with our song leaders and clergy may include five different versions of the Shema from the traditional chanting to your different versions you love from camp or youth group. Um, and then when you get into your classroom by grade, depending on your age, you may learn the Shema in sign language. You may take your class outside and close your eyes and listen and make a big poster board of all the things you heard that, you know, what, and did you hear better when you closed your eyes or did you hear better when they were open? Um, we use visual tefillah for the little ones, partially because um, we want them to have the visual, uh, all the same visual, but also that the cedarim can be really heavy for the tiny humans. So we don't want to burden them with that and have them all drop along the sanctuary. Um, the specialists in our school also incorporate the theme. So if you're in art that day or library or music, you'll also be learning more about that theme of the day, whether it's Shema or a Jewish holiday or a Jewish value. And we don't necessarily do it in order of the service. We'll, for example, we hold off on Moda, Moda Ani until right before Thanksgiving because we're talking about gratitude. And that's what we, we try to do. Um, for, for our middle school students, we call it our B Mitzvah Academy for grades five, six, and seven. Um, they lead Tefillah together with our cantor uh, and rabbi, and one our assistant rabbi, and they take turns leading prayers so they can practice. And um, it's it gives them a chance to to get the feeling of being a shaliach tibor, and um, it's really special. And 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 sometimes they'll use that time even just to talk about a specific prayer or really dig deeper and not do a full service, um, just so they have a better understanding of what the words are that they're praying and really polishing their skills with them, but also have a deeper connection to it themselves. Um, and. And then I'm uh, just trying to say, oh, e even in the little service, we, we invite people up to, to, to uh, lead, serve, lead prayers and songs. As the year goes on, we'll see our tiniest humans get up there, something they prepared during music specialist time. They'll come up in the, the end of last year, they did a wonderful um, movement to a song they had been working on um, about gratitude. It was really special. Um, so that's what we do in, in, in our tefillo. We also include choreography, but I think prayer aerobics will work much better for us. So again, thank you, Jay. 
Um, but at this time, I wanna move us into breakout groups. We're gonna give you three different topics to choose from, if we do this right. The first um, topic is partnering with clergy and connect, connection to the B mitzvah pro process with Cantor Rudnick. Or you can talk about developing Hebrew curriculum to meet tefillah goals with Rabbi Kleinman. Or you can talk about how do you build Bima confidence with, with Jay. Um, so Nahama's gonna do some wizardry with the gr breakout groups and hopefully you'll get to join a group. Before you go though, there is a Google deck that we made, one, uh, a slide deck where you can take notes as a group. Um, there's one slide per each group and that way we'll, you'll all have access to the notes from each group if you don't get into the one you want or if you wanna go to more than one. Um, I invite you to have someone either volunteer to take the notes for the whole group or you can all add to it because you should all have editing privileges if I did this right. So please use that deck so we can take notes on our, all of our conversations. Um, thank you, Nahama. Feel free to add another slide if you need to. So let's see if we can wizard you into those three different groups. So you need to join a group, you get to join. Some people already have, others haven't yet. Where did we do that? Did you get a pop-up for the um, rooms? No. Okay, hold on. Uh, if you go down to the bottom, you might find uh, in, in that like stream of, of icons where it says breakout Thank rooms. Thank you. There we go. Partnering with clergy could use some more people. Bima confidence also. Recording in progress. Welcome back, everyone. It seems like a lot of you really wanted to learn about developing Hebrew curriculum, and that's fantastic. But we wanna give every group a chance to just report back. So I'd love to hear from anyone who is with Cantor, Farron Rudnick for partnering with clergy and connection to the B mitzvah process. Anything you can share um, that would be of value to the rest of us. So, so we actually, um and I'm putting the notes in now, it was just Beth and, and me, and we had a really lovely conversation, um, really talking about the, not about the clergy connection, um, but specifically about the trajectory and the integration of Hebrew from the youngest to the oldest, um, and, and building both the retention, but the confidence and competence um, from the youngest to the oldest and how to kind of make that work with limited time and limited personnel, as is the case in uh, Beth's congregation. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Jay, do you want to report back or have someone from your group report back about bu building BEMA confidence? Um, just shared a few things about uh, how we have teachers uh, tell us when students are ready to lead. Um, so they practice in their classrooms and then they decide when they're ready to lead. And we've invited, we've opened it up to, you know, third grade and friends are leading a prayer because sometimes the third graders are a little timid, but then other kids will come and help. Um, we, uh, we talked a little bit about visual tefillah as well um, and some possibilities for that uh, beyond uh, Mishkan tefillah, um, visual tefillah, um, including like children's artwork and Google images, um, and some creative opportunities there. And we also uh, talked a little bit about um, older kid engagement in multi-grades fila and um, the notion of spreading out the older kids among to help the younger kids, um, which is something we're gonna try and something that I think uh, Alicia said they already do. Um, and Alicia also shared that midweek Tefillah, they do a mincha service, which I loved and am uh, surprised that we never thought about. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a great conversation with Alicia and Samantha and I. Fantastic. Rabbi Kleinman, 
You had the biggest group and it seems like a lot of people are clamoring for your Google Docs. So let's hear what you guys had learned together. Uh, which, uh, hold on. Um, well, I was saying at the end that the Google Doc question is about or how I organize our weekly assembly time and our weekly assembly time is 30 minutes and about 15 to 20 of those minutes is our tefillah with what I described at the beginning. Then we have another five minutes for music that's not tefillah music, but might be holiday music. Um, and then we have um, an interactive teaching component and we develop a theme for the year, you know, that we teach on. Um, so I could probably share a, a sample write up and then every week I would take a spreadsheet that has the the master list of things and break it into something that's a more specific cue sheet for Shabbat, which music we're going to do, and then what the write up of the teaching component is. And that's often a skit, a game show, um, you know, something where we're getting student participation and teachers and senior staff. Um, but uh, Isa asked a really good question in our group, which was if you delay decoding um, until fifth or sixth grade and the students have learned decoding, but they're still meeting in religious school, what do you do in their religious school time to build towards any of the prayer goals that you might have, um, either directly towards bar or bat mitzvah or for general knowledge? So that was a question that was posed. Another question that was posed is how, how do you reinforce or um, reward students for learning particular prayers? Um, how do we, uh, what is the goal in teaching an individual prayer? Is it just rote recitation? Is it knowledge of keywords and vocabulary? How do we use the limited time that we have, um, you know, to maximize the learning of our students? Um, so those were some of the, the questions that we were asking and not fully answering. Um, given another hour and a half, I'm sure we could have given our own expertise and, and helped each other out further. So Nahama just wrote in the chat, just a heads up, we try not to say delay decoding anymore. Um, so we don't want that. We, we don't want our children to think we're delayed um, at all. Um, COVID or pre-COVID or post-COVID even in addition. Um, and I, I love that, that line. And I also just think that um, we definitely have an opportunity to delve deeper in this moment very, right now and ask a few more questions. But I really encourage everyone to put notes in the Google Docs so we can all continue to learn from one another. Um, at the very end, we'll share our contact information um, from this panel in case you have further questions. Um, so uh, is there anybody who has burning questions they really want to discuss right now, um, since we have a few extra minutes? Put in the chat. Or you could speak up. Or you could speak up. Okay, Julie Blair asks, my question is always, do people really decode prayer and or do we need to teach reading prayer or should we just enjoy hearing and learning the meaning so that we can participate in tefillah? It's a great question. So I know that next week in the decoding webinar, we're gonna be talking about this, um, the difference between decoding and reading and reciting. Uh, and my one throwaway statement will be, if all you can do is decode, you cannot stay up at synagogue speed. You have to get the prayers into your head and in your heart so that then in a sound to print system, then you match what's in your head to the print on the page. So, um, but that's more of next week. Stay tuned. I know I would add from my own personal experience with our students, some kids will never learn to fully decode. Well, some will only will never take things into their hearts in the same way. We manage the expectations through a very relational process while we're a community that brings these kids to the Bima. It's a very individual experience to become Bima Mitzvah. It's not the only reason why we teach tefillah and prayer, but it seems to be a, a very large step for them to, a goal for them to achieve. Um, but we just really help to manage the expectations of the family. So if Bobby really wants them to chant Haftarah, we get them there if they want to be. Um, but it, it, if there are children who've done, um, uh, the Baya Hafta and a few lines of Torah, there are children who've led the entire service with decoding, without transliteration, whatever. It's all what's meaningful to these children and giving them an experience that connects them to our community and, and creates what we call our joyful, communal and accessible experience. I, 
I would also add uh, a story that I shared in our breakout session that seems relevant is that um, this year, our third graders were up on the BIMA because their teacher had them ready to lead Shema, and it was toward the end of the year, and we intended for them to sit down with uh, before Ve'a Havta, but instead of sitting down, they stayed on the BIMA because they're used to going right into Ve'a Havta, and they just chanted it. And I wouldn't say it was perfection, but I would say there was confidence um, and a level of competence that really surprised me because I knew they had not spent any time in class on Ve'a Havta. It is purely what they learned from one year um, in third grade in tefillah, um, cause we don't, I, we don't really do Ve'ahavta in our younger tefillah. So one year, um, and they were confident on the Bima in six months to at least go for it with Ve'ahavta. And it was really sweet and very exciting. And I just want to add one thing that we didn't get to in our notes at the beginning. And just based on what Rachel said, Cantor Rudnick is our sixth grade Hebrew coordinator. She teaches in our sixth grade. And then she's also our B'nai Mitzvah uh, point person and coordinator. So just to Rachel's point, what we have learned to do in our doing um, is that Cantor Rudnick is getting information about the students throughout the sixth grade year from the Hebrew teachers so that when she is ready to meet with them to transition to B'nai Mitzvah tutoring, we have a knowledge of them from where they've been in the year, what they've learned in class. But then also, since the cantor is in the classroom with them and knows our tutors, she's part of the process the whole way. Um, and that's a new addition to, to what we did um, starting last year. Um, and it's, I, cantor, you can speak to it for a second if you want, but I think it's just um, a really nice system to have in place when you have the luxury of the staffing to do it that way. Yes, and, <laughs> sorry. Um, the other piece is that, you know, there's so many different parts to the puzzle because each person and child and learner we're working with, right, is so different. And they come at it from a different place. And their parents come at it, or as adults, they come at it from a different place. And so, for example, right, one of the things in my class that I always do, whether it's with adults or with students, mm -hmm. is, I, is I try to help them really to identify almost like anchors whether it's the root of a word that they hear a lot, like kiddish, right? Or whether it's a word like a sight word, right? Just so that even if they're not confident yet decoding or finding that spiritual place with the Hebrew, I think it was Julie had asked the question, right? That there are moments for connection because they hear that root or they hear that word repeated over and over again. and. I probably repeat it with them ad nauseum in my class, but I want that connection there so that even people who don't yet feel confident, no matter their age, there's something that's drawing them in. If I can slide in and make three quick observations of things that, that I don't wanna say they surprised me, but things that I'm pulling out of this. Um, one is that relationships we know that since COVID, that has like come to the fore and i've heard that from everybody that those relationships and it are important and the sense of individualization not only in the learning but i think there's pieces that may be happening at a bar about mitzvah um isa aaron bar about mitzvah revolution still kind of floats through and the third thing is uh i think rachel talked about um i may be using the word wrong to feel at dance parties Rabbi Kleinman talked about dancing in the aisles. I'm sure Cantor Rundick was doing that too. Jay did the aerobics. That tefillah as really appropriate for children. Like this is not adult, you know, you put on the adult clothes on the children, but that there seems to be really thoughtfulness about what kids need and deserve and how we can make, make it fit them and, and who they are. Great, thank you. I'm mindful of the time because I know there's an ARJ webinar happening immediately at two. Um, so I'm going to ask Nahama to put the link from Onward Hebrew that is relevant to this conversation. And I'm going to ask each of our panelists to put their uh, name and contact information should you want to reach out to us specifically about what we're doing. Um, and we are always happy to continue the conversation. And I know that this population for me personally has been extremely supportive in these last few years as we move forward out of the COVID world. So um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your summer and good luck next year. Thank you to the panelists. This was really great. Appreciate it.
Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was fun. Have a nice day.